Coming up, we're talking Dennis Erb Jr.'s Monday win at East Bay, Dirk R. Nationals Day 2, plus news from Keith Coons and XR. Let's go. Today is Tuesday, February 8th, 2022. Welcome into Dirt Tracker Daily. I'm Justin Fiedler. I saw online somewhere yesterday where a commenter or a tweeter or somebody said that Lucas Speed Weeks don't officially start until they get to East Bay. It's an interesting thought, and it does seem like things have been building into this week. As some have alluded to, we did have a big car count last night with 70 late models showing up to race. At some point, though, somebody's going to have to explain to me why we go some places in dirt racing with better payouts and get fewer cars, and go other places with smaller payouts and get more cars. Last night's show at East Bay was 5,000 to win and 500 to start. Not a bad payout, for sure. Uh, And we had 70 late models. Is it just because guys can race there all week at the same track? We've had more money available elsewhere this this season with Lucas between Golden Isles, Bubba, and Alltech, but East Bay gets the most cars. And you won't often hear me be super critical of sanctioning bodies because I think for the most part the major players in dirt racing do a nice job at something that's really, really difficult. But I don't understand Lucas running two 26-car B-mains last night. If you're a driver starting near the back of one of those races, I don't see the point in racing. 26 cars go for 10 laps and two guys transfer. That is insanely tough sledding for those guys starting in the back, uh, you know, not even in the back, some in the midfield. In the first B, Cody Overton and Deshaun Gingrich were both plus nine and nowhere near a transfer. And in the second B main, Larry Greer somehow picked up 13 positions in 10 laps and only finished 13th. If you aren't starting top five in those races, your night is effectively over. I don't see why you wouldn't either run more alphabet races or add a third B main, give some more guys a chance to make that feature and make it more worthwhile on the night. In the night's feature, Brandon Overton led the field to green from the pole and was out front for the first 18 laps. Second starting, Dennis Erb Jr. actually faded a bit at the start, but then was able to get things rolling and he drove back through the field, taking the lead from Big Sexy on lap 19. Seems like we haven't seen a lot of guys just run down and pass Overton lately, and the speed we saw from Herb last night hasn't really been present so far during speed weeks. He had just three top tens through the first seven nights and no top fives, but last night was definitely his night, leading the final 12 laps en route to his first Lucas victory in seven years back to 2015. Hudson O'Neill ended up second, Tim McCready was third from 11th, Shane Clanton hard charged from 19th to finish fourth, and Stormy Scott completed the top five. Overton tried to buck the trend of everyone on the very, very bottom late in the race uh, yesterday, and he moved up to make something happen, but got bit by that high side. He popped the wall late in the race in turn one and was done for the night. He was scored in the 25th position. Ashton Winger was also racy last night, running in the top five, but was also a victim of the top side, spinning out late in turn one. He finished the race in 15th. As for win picks last night, Dennis Herb Jr. wasn't on my radar or the formulas. We both had Brandon Shepard, who went 17th to 9th in the feature. The formula is staying with Shepard tonight with last night's race results added into the mix. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Overton tonight myself. He looked pretty good uh, on Monday, and you know they're going to make some changes to that Longhorn and get it dialed in for tonight. Something to keep an eye on, though, today for all of these Florida races is the weather. There are rain chances through the day, and it's very possible we could see more cancellations. If things do get going, though, you can again watch live on MAV TV+. Across the state, Dirt Car Nationals was scheduled to have UMP Modifieds and the All-Star Circuit of Champions opener tonight, but the racing has again been canceled. The Monday program was lost to a saturated facility, and with rain in the forecast today, officials pulled the plug yet again. There's been a lot of talk about the racetrack surface since that opening uh, late model uh, weekend back in January at Volusia, and the question marks are still there headed into this week. I've seen some tweets from a few drivers about what they're seeing, and I think those reservations will remain until we see cars on track and no problems. I know they've been working really hard to get things squared away. We'll just have to kind of wait and see if that hard work has paid off over the last couple of weeks. Like I mentioned yesterday, we should have a healthy field of modifieds. That's pretty standard for Volusia, and we should have a really good group of sprint cars. We did lose a sprint car team yesterday, though, from the week. The Swindell Speed Lab 39 was supposed to be at Volusia for the All-Star and Outlaw shows with Christopher Bell behind the wheel. 
But they tweeted yesterday that they are not coming due to, quote, unforeseen circumstances. I don't know what that means. And honestly, it doesn't really matter. It is a shame, though, that we won't get to see them. There will be plenty of other really good cars there, though, with a lot of the all-star teams coming and the full-time outlaw guys racing. Uh, if things do get going tomorrow with the sprint cars and modifieds, it's going to be one of those crappy streaming nights again with the modifieds on Dervision and the all-stars on Flow Racing. It's yet another year with still no agreement between the various parties to avoid these situations. It's a big L for the viewers for sure when these nights happen. But just know at this point, you've been warned. Uh, hopefully we'll get to see some racing on Wednesday. Over to a couple of news items from yesterday. It seems like we've been talking about Keith Coons Motorsports a lot lately as they make driver announcements for 2022 and things kept busy with that team for yesterday. For the first time in nearly a decade, Keith Coons Motorsports will field a car with the USAC National Sprint Car Series. They last did so in 2013 with Christopher Bell and the team has had a ton of success in the past with that series, including a bunch of wins from current KKM employee Jay Drake. Coons told USAC's Richie Murray that they started on this plan last year with hopes of getting Dazen Persley some sprint car experience, but obviously that plan changed with Dazen's injuries late last year. The team has pushed forward though, and they hope to run the full schedule. They just aren't sure about drivers just yet. Buddy Kofoid will start the season in the car in Florida, and then from there they will work on a schedule. Buddy is already committed to the full midget schedule and a sizable wing sprint car schedule with that new team owned by Bernie Stubgen and Brennan, uh, Brennan Crouch's father, Layton. So they're trying to figure out what Buddy can actually do this season. Coons is hopeful for a run at the owner's championship, though. In the past two years, Kofoid has made five national sprint car appearances with USAC, finishing in the top 10 in every race, uh, every race uh, which was three nights at Kokomo in 2020 and two uh, at Bubba in 2021. Four of those were also top five results. If Buddy isn't able to run those races, I'm sure there are plenty of young drivers that would be clawing at a chance to run a KKM prepared sprint car. Sprint car season for USAC starts on February 17th down in Ocala, Florida. The other news from yesterday involves the Bristol Dirt Nationals. The XR event is adding a co-sanction from the Ironman late models owned by Chris Tilly to the super late model portion of those races. The dual XR Super Series Ironman shows will take place March 25th and 26th and April 1st and 2nd. Each race is $50,000 to win and $2,500 to start. The co-sanction should help bolster the car count for the races, especially on weekends where the Ward of Outlaws are also racing. The first weekend is up against the Rock Galt Memorial at Cherokee, and the second is up against the Illini 100 at Farmer City. With so much cash on the line, you should see some pretty big names in attendance. Besides Chris Ferguson, who has announced he's running the full XR slate, I'm assuming we'll see guys like Jonathan Davenport, Jimmy Owens, and Scott Bloomquist. To see more on the event and the news, check out racexr.com. It's a nice little Tuesday on the streaming services with five shows, actually four shows today. Dirt Vision uh, was supposed to have the Dirt Car Nationals from Volusia. Obviously, that's been canceled at this point. Flow Racing uh, also canceled at this point, so I guess we're down to three. Flow Racing 24-7 is happening, as are the Lucas Late Models on Map TV Plus, and Speed Sport has modifieds and stock cars from North Florida Speedway. To see the full daily streaming schedule with links to watch, visit dirttracker.com slash watch tonight. That's it for the show today. Hope you have a good Tuesday. If you have thoughts about the topics on today's show, please leave them in the comments below or tweet at me. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for more Dirt Tracker Daily.